There are a few more important features in the 3D view header that we haven't talked about yet. The first is the pivot point. So we've done a lot of rotating and moving and scaling things already. And we know that in object mode, that's based off the object origin or that little orange dot that's in the center of our object. And we learned in a previous lesson how we can move that around and manipulate that. So if we hit R and Z and rotate this, it's going to be rotated around that object origin. But that's just the default behavior. We can change that if we want to. Under the pivot point options, we can change this to any one of these other settings. The first one is bounding box center but that's not going to make any difference here until we have multiple objects. So let's look at how the default, which is median point, works with multiple objects. I'll just take my cube here, and we just learned the shift D hotkey. So I'll shift D and duplicate this cube around a few times. I'll have a bunch over here, and then I'll have one you know, way off to the side over to the right. So if we take all of our cubes, and let me just go ahead and delete my other objects. If I select all of my cubes, and I'll look from top view, hit R and rotate, you can see that it's rotating around the average of all of our object origins. But if we set this to bounding box center, then that's essentially like drawing an imaginary box around our object and rotating from the center of that imaginary box. So it's just like a different type of average. It's pretty rare that I'll use that one though. So let's look at the next one, which is 3D cursor. This one's a lot more helpful. This is just going to, as you probably guessed, rotate around the 3D cursor. So no matter which objects we have selected or where they are, they're always going to rotate or scale or do any of these other transformations in relation to the 3D cursor. So this one can be helpful because you can dynamically place it pretty fast. Again, the hotkey for that is shift right click. So if I wanted to, for example, rotate all of these objects around the corner of our cube here, I could just shift right click. It'll place the 3D cursor right at that point. And then I could go to top view to rotate around the Z axis and just rotate all of our objects according to that point. Or we could use shift right click to place this wherever we want. Next up after that is individual origins, and this is another really helpful one. Because so far, when we've selected multiple objects, we've been transforming them all as one big whole. But if we set this to individual origins, and we rotate, then they'll all rotate around themselves. Or if we scale, then they'll scale around their own individual object origins. Median point is the default, and lastly we have active element, which is just the object origin of the active object. So if we selected this one last and made that the active object, and we hit R to rotate, it'll rotate around that one. If I select this one over here, it'll rotate around that one. So pretty intuitive. Let's set this back to median point though, and let's take a look at the next option over, which is snapping. I'll go ahead and delete all of our extra cubes here, and I'll zoom in on this one, bring it back to kind of the center, but not quite, and then just turn on snapping. Now, if I hit G, it's going to snap to even increments. We can see this better if we actually go into perspective view here and bring this down towards the grid. And if I move this along the x-axis, you can see it jumps exactly one unit over. Now we can change whatever one unit is considered to be in one of two places. We can either go to the overlays and look at our grid and change the grid scale. So if we wanted to go exactly half the size, we could set this to 0.5, and then we could snap to those smaller units. I'll go back to my overlays and set this back to one. And the other way that we could change this is actually change the scale of the scene as a whole. And we can do that in our scene properties. So in our properties editor, let's head over to the scene tab, which is the one with the cone and the circle and the sphere. Let's go down to units and we could change the unit scale here. I'll leave that at one though, which is usually good. And we could switch the unit system from metric to imperial, or we could set it to something a little bit bigger or smaller. So by default, it's set to meters but we could set it to centimeters or kilometers. And you'll notice that the grid itself didn't change. But if we look at our object properties now, you'll notice that our location X is now in kilometers. And if I go back to my scene properties, switch this back to meters, go back to look at my object properties. Now this is in meters. So the actual location of our object didn't change. We've just changed the default way that our units are displayed. One interesting thing about working with units in Blender is that it's really easy to convert from one to the other because you can just type it into a number input. So for example, right here we're working in meters, but if I go over to my object properties and let's say I just zero this all out, I'll type in zero for all three of them. Let's say I want to move it one foot along the X axis. Well, instead of having to do the math with a calculator or in my head, what I could do is just go to the X axis and type in one FT for feet and hit enter then that'll do the conversion for me. Or if I want to type in one mile, one MI, 
it'll move it one mile along the x-axis. That's a little bit far though, so I'll set that back to zero, but you get the idea. Anyway, all that to say, what a unit is in Blender can be changed in the scene settings. But when we have snapping enabled, we'll just move by those even increments. I'll go back to my move tool, and you can just see that it snaps however we move this. Now, if we move this off the grid a little bit, I'll move it off to the side here, and then turn snapping back on, you'll notice that it doesn't actually snap to the grid points, it just moves by one unit. We can change that behavior over in the popover. If we turn on absolute grid snap, then it'll actually snap to those points no matter what. Now, I use snapping all the time, but I don't often turn it on. And that's because there's a hotkey for it, which is a lot easier to work with. So I'll usually turn that off so I can move things freely. And then if I want to snap something, I'll just hold control. So as I'm moving it, after I've already left clicked and entered the move mode, I'll hold control and that'll now snap. Then I can let go with my left mouse button and then let go of control. Let's try that one more time. This time I'll just snap along both the X and Y axes by holding this blue square. I'll left click to drag. And then after I've entered the move mode, I'll hold control, move around, let go of my left mouse button, and then let go of control. For now though, I'll turn snapping back on just because I want to go through all of these different settings. The next type of snapping is vertex snapping. And this is the one that trips people up a little bit because it takes a little bit to get used to. But let's go ahead and add a new object. I'll hit Shift A, Mesh and Plane. And actually our 3D cursor is way off into space. So if you remember how to get it back, we can hit Shift S or go to our snapping options in our object menu and go to Cursor to World Origin and then Shift S again, Selection to Cursor. Then I'll hit S to scale up this plane. And now let's say I want to snap my cube to the different points on the plane. Well, since I have vertex snapping enabled, I can just hit G. And then in order to get it to snap, I need to hover my mouse over one of the points. So if it's not anywhere near any of the points, it'll just ignore the snapping. But if I hover my mouse over a vertex, then it'll snap right to it. And we can see that indicated by this little circle. Now it kind of snapped the opposite way that I wanted it to. I wanted it to snap on top of the plane and not on the bottom. Well, that's because by default, if we go over to the snapping options, it's setting to snap with closest. And at this point, when our cube was way over here, this vertex was the closest one to that one, and that's why it was snapped. But if we make the bottom vertex the closest one just by moving this up a little bit, and then hit G, and then hover over that vertex, then it'll snap right to it. Then I can left click to confirm. And in this way, I can just hit G and move my mouse to any one of these points, and the cube will snap right to it with whichever vertex is closest to that point. So it does take a little bit of getting used to because it's different from snapping in other software, but it works pretty fast. We can also snap to an edge by hitting G and then hovering over any edge and we can slide along that edge. Again, we'll just choose the nearest point as the one to slide along it. And then if we're not close to any edge, then it'll just ignore snapping. Lastly, we have face snapping which as you guessed it, will just snap to a face. So again, hit G, hover my mouse over the surface that I want to snap to, and it'll snap right to it. Now, one option that's particularly helpful here is align rotation to target. If we go to our snapping options and turn that on, then our cube is going to align itself to the surface that it's on top of. So let's go ahead and just rotate this along the X axis here. And let's say we want to snap the cube to it. Well, I could just hit G, and hover over that surface, and it'll rotate the cube such that the local Z axis is using the normal of the plane. So you can see sometimes it kind of flips it around and doesn't always get it entirely right. And again, that's just because it's using the closest vertex of the cube as the one that's snapping to that ground. So if we wanted to absolutely make sure that the bottom of the cube is what's being snapped, we'd want to first place it above and then hit G and then start to snap. So those are the main snapping options. There's a lot more that we could go through, but for now I'll set it back to vertex because that's what I use most of the time. And I'll turn off snapping because I know I can always hold control and get that same effect. We'll talk a lot more about the different snapping options in the fundamentals of mesh modeling. For now, let's take a look at the last option, which is proportional editing. For that, I'll go ahead and delete my plane there, take our cube and to reset it back to the center, I'll hit Alt G to clear that location. Alt-R to clear that rotation, and then Alt-S just in case to clear the scale. 
Now, proportional editing, if we just use it on an object all by itself, it's really not going to do anything. So we need to have multiple objects in the scene. So I'll turn that off and just really quickly hit Shift D and duplicate this around a bit and select all these, Shift D, and just make a bunch of cubes here. Okay, and then what I'll do is select one that's somewhat in the middle. Then I'll turn on proportional editing and move this up along the Z axis. When proportional editing is on, we'll get this little circle that goes around our original location. And if I scroll up on my mouse wheel, it'll scale that circle down. But if I scroll down on my mouse wheel, it'll scroll it back up. And as it starts to encompass the origin point of these other objects, then they'll start to be transformed as well. So even though I only have one object selected, it's transforming all of them. And there's a nice gradual fall off between them. So the larger my circle is, the more objects are being transformed. This can be occasionally confusing for beginners because sometimes they forget that they have it on and it's scrolled so far back that it's just encompassing the whole screen. And so if you don't see the circle, just try scrolling up and scaling that circle down first. I'll hit Control Z and undo that. And if you want, you can look at some of the other fall off shapes. For example, we could choose constant where everything is moved exactly the same amount if it's within that circle. Or you might also want to play with linear. Random is also a fun one. Because that's how you can make some really interesting randomized effects. Most of the time though, I have this option off. If you're coming from another software, you might know this feature as soft selection. It's the exact same thing. Now all of these features work in edit mode as well as object mode. So let me go ahead and delete all of our extra cubes here and just take our original one, zoom into it, and hit tab to go into edit mode. In edit mode, these will all work exactly the same, but just based on the components instead of the object origins. So as an example, let's just take an edge here and I'll hit shift D and move it along the Y axis till it's over here. Um, but let's say we got it off axis just a little bit and it's just you know somewhere way over here and we wanted to line it up with the bottom edge down here but not move it any closer to the cube well what we can do is snap it but only along certain axes so if i wanted to snap it to the bottom one along the z axis i could hit g and then z and then hold control and then hover my mouse over the target vertex and i realized that we have a line rotation to target turned on so that's why we got this weird result so if you ever get some strange rotation while you're transforming things it's probably because you have a line rotation to target turned on. So go ahead and check that off. Now, if I hit G and Z, again, hover my mouse over the target vertex, then it'll snap right to it along the Z axis. Then if I want to make sure that this edge is aligned on the X axis, again, I'll hit G and X, hover my mouse over the target, hold control to snap. Now my edge is perfectly aligned. I'll go ahead and delete this edge for now though. And I think the only thing that we didn't talk about is snapping rotation. So we've talked about snapping the locations of things, but it's also helpful to know that at any point, if you're rotating something, let's just say we're looking at it from side view here, and I hit R to rotate, I can hold control and snap to even increments. Though I think we saw this already with our rotate gizmo. If we go and rotate things this way, we can start to rotate, hold control, and then we get those little tick marks. But we can do the same thing without that gizmo. If we just want to hit R at any point, rotate along an axis, and then hold control, we can move things a little bit more precisely. Again, these settings work in edit mode just as well as in object mode. But I wouldn't worry about them too much as we'll talk a lot more about these in the fundamentals of mesh modeling, but at least go ahead and try them out once before moving on to the next lesson.